Well, hey guys, thanks for checking out another video with Angel and I. We just decided to start a little fire. We went out snowshoeing today. I don't know, we're a number of miles from the closest road in here, I suppose. Um, way up in northern Minnesota, so nothing funner to do than just to stop and maybe dry out a little bit. Sweating coming in here. Um, middle of winter, so it was fun. I got a new saw. I, I think you'll you'll see that in the video. I got a new uh, cross cut saw essentially. So just kind of working on that. So we got camping season coming up here, making sure that that's going to be a, a good fit for us. It's, we're just going to enjoy this fire. Um, stick around. You'll see us how to build a nice nice fire in the middle of winter like this. And one thing you're going to know <laughs> notice, believe it or not, on these these fires, building fires like this in the winters, it's way more humid out there than here than you. Uh, actually think i mean everything is wet and damp and you know when fall comes by and you get all the fall rains everything gets soaking wet and then it freezes so as you are i'm um, digging cutting into this stuff everything is usually soaking wet even the dead stuff is, is soaking wet um so it's a matter of getting it dried out and, and getting that fire started so stick around check out this video um hit thumbs up if you're not subscribed hit subscribe uh, we keep trying to pump these out about once a week so thanks for checking out the video Right? Yeah. <laughs> Anything else to say? No. <laughs> my butt's cold. <laughs> I know, my butt's getting wet on this log. <laughs> yeah. deep. <laughs> I think if you stay towards the middle, oh boy, that's why you wear snowshoes. Don't tip over. those for? Start a fire. You got it. Three? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a workout. Yeah. How's that saw working so far? Seems pretty good. It's sharp. It's Boreal 21. Agua Canyon. So this was recommended. I was uh, at Pragus in Ely, which is a outfitter store over by the Boundary Waters. And there was a, I was looking for a camp saw. And there was a sign that was hanging up behind the counter there were about four other saws like this and there was a sign hanging right on this one that said preferred saw uh, that's used by the guides there's a lot of guides that take people out into the yep. wilderness so thought I'd give it a try the cool thing about this saw is there's really no parts there's no wing nuts that's kind of the, the key to this one. There's no parts to lose. I'm still learning it. There we go. So it folds up like that. Okay. And then when you take it apart to use it, open, wing it open wide. There's a little notch right there. The notch comes into the handle, 
snaps done. So it's quick, easy. Again, no replacement, no moving parts, no wing nuts to lose. So seems to be pretty good. It's quick to get out. And I got a log back behind me jamming me up there. Shortcuts. The only thing I noticed I didn't like about it is when it's packed up. We'll open it, we'll put it back. One thing I noticed I didn't like, I'll show you. And how much was that? It was like 70 bucks. It wasn't cheap. But one thing I didn't like is listen. Yeah, it's noisy. See? Rattling. Rattling. Right. So when the thing is with that is when you're, especially as a bow hunter for most of my life, is when you're walking in the woods, packing and... You don't want to make all that noise. You don't want to make all that noise. You won't see any no, any that's... wildlife, anything, a fake noise like that they can hear a mile away. Yeah, right. So I might have to figure out a way to... Silence that. Yeah, stick a stick, wedge a stick in there or something. But other than that, it seems to be fine. Again, I got a log jamming me up back there. Not a single soul out here. Not a single track either. Not a single track for miles. So it's coming close to evening. We got a ways to hike back. So we got our headlamps. But before we do, I figured we'd start a fire. So it can be tough to start a fire in Minnesota in the middle of winter. So this is how I do it. Whether you do it this way or not, everybody does it different. But I tend to, I mean, you can, you want to try and get down to ground if you can, but I mean, we've got a lot of snow this year, so how I do it is I'll actually make a base out of wood and then build the fire on top of that. Okay. That does a couple things. It keeps the fire out of the, out of the water, but then it also gives a chance for the base to start on fire. So that's always a bonus too. That's how I do it. Where's your vegan hot dogs? My vegan hot dogs are over here. Vegan hot dog. Actually, they're vegan corn dogs. Breaded oh, corn, corn dogs. dogs. Vegan corn right, dogs. Hold on, let me take this off. So, I'm gonna put those right there for now. And then we're going to start breaking up some dry sticks that Angel gathered. They tend to start the easiest, of course, the smaller the diameter. And believe it or not, it's really humid in the winter. You might think it's not humid in your house in the winter. You got the furnace going, but realistically and outside, it's, it's kind of muggy. So it can be tough to get a fire started in the winter. Yeah, it feels damp. And out believe here. it or not, warm wood starts way easier than cold wood so all the years where i'd burn fires in our our wood stove at home i'd always have wood warming up right next to the wood stove because they always start faster and light easier and just be easier in general to get a fire started so Pine is always good too because there's always sap in the pine. Sap has oils in it. So that tends to usually take off really well compared to others. Like Lincoln logs when you're a kid. Okay, you're just building a little house. So I did collect on the way a little bit of birch bark. Came across the birch tree. Just grabbed a little bit, not a whole lot. Because we do have vegan hot dogs, which is a bonus. I don't usually have when I get to start a fire. So I'll put he that in there first. Okay. We'll just start putting the smallest stuff on top of there. Almost building like a TP on top of it if you can. And you want it nice and airy. You don't want it packed down at all. No packing. And this stuff is wet. I can feel it. Nice and airy. 
And then I always try and light the birch bark first if I can get to it underneath here. So here we go. We have fire. Fire. Fire, fire, fire. Maybe you need some more vegan uh, hot dogs. So the real trick to this is when you're getting it going is to getting those little twigs dry because that's hard because they're wet. Everything is wet. It's holding moisture and it's frozen inside of it. So blowing on it is almost like having a forge where you put, you're sending air into those uh, coals that are there and that just really helps to heat things up. See, these are all wet. I can feel them. Yeah. They're frozen and right. full of moisture. So, you know, there's even times where I've been winter camping where it's been darn near impossible to get a fire going or even keeping it going. So then what'll happen here is as these smaller twigs start to uh, burn down, they're going to make a nice bed of coals. So once we get a nice hot bed of coals going, then we can start feeding some of the bigger stuff. Um, we do have some bigger probably three inch logs over there. Those are even kind of big. Those could take some time to dry out. So we'll feed the twigs and sticks that we do have. And um, one thing I can always say about um, having a winter fire or winter camping with the fire is if you think you have enough wood, take that times three, and then you're probably close to how much you're actually gonna need. Maybe even times four. It takes way more than you would think. I've fallen into that trap many a times. Well, we're out of here, guys. We had a little fire. It was nice, nice fun to have get in the woods, have a little fire in the middle of winter. So um, we're going to head on out here. We got a, at least a good hour and a half snowshoe ahead of us. And we totally broke the trail coming in here. So it's not totally broke, but at least it'll be a little bit better heading out. So yeah, if this is the type of content that you'd like, um, hit subscribe. Check us out on Facebook. Um, we are now on BitChute too. So check out BitChute. We're starting to add some videos there. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. That's scary. 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 Sasquatch mating season.